Hey everyone, this is Stefan James from Project Life Mastery, and today I'm gonna to share with you the seven signs that you're destined to become a millionaire. So you're probably here right now because you have the goal, the aspiration to become either a millionaire or a multimillionaire. And so I wanna share with you the signs, the qualities, the habits, the character traits, the disciplines, the ways of being that I've observed and learned from other people that are millionaires and multimillionaires. Because I'm a fan of the process called modeling. Modeling suggests that whatever result that someone else has that you and I want, we too can have that if we model them, if we observe and study the patterns of what's made them successful, what's allowed them to have that result. If we're willing to apply that to ourselves, then we too can create that result. What one man or woman can do, another man or woman can do. And I think there's more than enough evidence on the internet, on YouTube, through books and many resources of people that started with nothing and they've transformed their life and they've become a multimillionaire. And so there's plenty of proof and evidence that should give you confidence in the belief that you too can become a millionaire or multimillionaire no matter what your circumstances because there's people out there that have already done it. And if they've done it, then you can too. So as I share these signs, I want you to have an open mind to look at, be willing to look at what you need to improve or cultivate or master so that you can accelerate the process of you becoming a millionaire or a multimillionaire in your life. So with that being said, the first sign that you're destined to become a millionaire is that you're young and that you're starting early. The earlier that you start in life, the greater advantage you have because you have time on your side. You have more time to make mistakes, to fail. You know, if you fail in your 20s, it's not gonna wipe you out, it's not gonna devastate you. You still have the rest of your life, you can recover, you can learn from that, and you can rebound and create success and become a millionaire. If you fail when you're in your 60s, it can be catastrophic. You've got more on the line, you've got more responsibilities, you've got a family that you're taking care of, you've got your retirement that you've accumulated for your whole life. So you have a lot more to lose than when you're young. When you're young, you don't have much to lose. You know, it's not the end of the world, it's not gonna be a big deal if you fail and you make mistakes because you can just pick yourself back up and learn from that and that learning and that growth will be a huge asset in you becoming successful and becoming a millionaire. The other fact that when you're young, you're not as conditioned. You don't have as much negative programming and you're not as fixed in your belief systems and your ways. So when you're young, you know, if you're a teenager, your 20s, your 30s, as I know many of you that are here watching me are, when you're young, you don't have as much conditioning and negative beliefs and negative habits that you've accumulated throughout your life. And if you're older, unfortunately, you know, there's some bad habits and some fixed mindsets and some belief systems and things that you've become accustomed to and maybe some limiting beliefs and some fears and some scarcities and you've conditioned that and taking that in, it's not that you can't change that when you're older because I believe no matter what your age is, you can still become successful, you can still achieve whatever you want, but it's just a lot harder because you'll have more resistance when you're trying to make changes when you're older than you are when you're younger. When you're young, you're a clean slate. When you're young, you're an open book. You don't yet, you know, really, you haven't really formulated your identity and your beliefs and all these um, aspects of yourself and the aspects of the ego. And so when you're young, you can be more flexible in taking on some new perspectives, some new mindsets to try new things, to do things that someone that's older might not be willing to do because they're more in their comfort zone and they don't want to step outside of that. It's more scary for them. So that's a huge advantage from my perspective is that when you're starting young, you can really shape your personality, your beliefs, your, your, you know, who you are, your identity, a lot more than when you're older because you're more fixed in that. And again, for those of you that are in your 40s, 50s, 60s, I'm not here to say that you can't become successful, you can't become a millionaire because you absolutely can. You also have advantages of your knowledge and your wisdom and your life experience that can be an advantage in you becoming a millionaire also. So don't create a limiting belief that because you're old that you can't become a millionaire. You absolutely can because there's plenty of proof and evidence of people that have done it, okay? This is a sign though, if you're young, you're more likely to be destined to become a millionaire. Another powerful aspect of being young is the investments that you make in yourself and in your life, your financial investments, business, whatever it is, 
the, the earlier that you start investing, no matter what it is, then you see the geometric growth and compounding of that over many years and many decades. And so most people know about compounding. It's the eighth wonder of the world. It's one of the most powerful principles in creating wealth. If you take, for example, there's been a lot of research that shows if you take, let's say, $50 a month or $100 a month and you just put that aside and you put that into the S&P 500 index fund or you put that in a mutual fund and you just do that month after month after month, then over several decades, that $50 or that $100 a month will compound and within 30, 40 years, you'll become a millionaire. And so the fact that when you're young, you have more time on your side for your money to compound. I think the, the same is true also for knowledge. The same is true for things that you're learning when you're younger. Because I know for me, I started my journey of personal development when I was 17 years old. And I got into Tony Robbins and Brian Tracy and Jim Rohn and you know, all of these old school self-help teachers and gurus. And I would religiously listen to their material. And what it did was it implanted in me this belief system that I will become a millionaire by the time I'm 30. You know, I'll be able to achieve anything that I want because I had so much possibilities. And, and of course, I was naive too. I haven't yet failed and experienced disappointment and you know, had expectations and have you know, falling short of that. I hadn't yet gone through that. And so I was very naive and I was just like, of course I'll become a millionaire. You know, I've got all of this knowledge. I have all these resources. I'm learning from people that are successful. All they gotta do, and even if I mess up and don't become a millionaire by 30 and I make many mistakes, just the fact that I have a lot of time on my side and if I'm not willing to give up, then it's inevitable that I'll become a millionaire or a multimillionaire. And so when I was learning when I was 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, you know, I was really shaping my, building my confidence and my social skills and learning all these things. When I was 18, I read a book called The Wealthy Barber by David Chilton and it taught me about paying myself first and just taking a small percentage of what you earn, put that aside, invest it in a mutual fund. So I made my first investment at 18, which was a Bank of Montreal mutual fund. Minimum investment was $500. And I set it up automatically to withdraw $25 per month from my bank account. That's all I could afford at the time. 25 bucks to put that in it. And I just believed that will eventually make me a millionaire without even thinking about it and having to worry about it too much by the time I'm you know, 60 years old. And so when I learned all this other information though, and I was learning all, you know, skills about marketing and sales and business and finances, all these things, oftentimes I wouldn't really see the result of that in the next few months or the next few years. Um, there are certain things for me now at 36 years old, I've seen my investment pay off from when I was 17, just in knowledge and skills and things I learned, pay off for me in my 20s, my 30s. You know, even for example, when I was young, I started learning public speaking and I did Toastmasters and I was making investments in myself to become a better speaker. Well, that paid off a decade later, you know, when I was starting Project Life Mastery, starting a YouTube channel, trying to, you know, inspire people and help people and share my ideas and share information of what I'm learning. That investment didn't pay off right away, but it paid off a decade later. And so that's what I mean by when you start young with learning and growing and doing these things, you have your life ahead of you and the impact of certain ideas and skills that you learn at a young age, you have no idea the return that's going to be over your entire life. There's certain lessons and things that I've learned at a young age that have contributed to me making millions of dollars or have contributed to me creating more happiness in my life or contributed to you know, having more freedom or whatever it is, you know? So the younger that you start, guys, the earlier that you start, the better. Now, they say the best time to have planted a tree was, you know, a year ago or 10 years ago. The second best time is right now, today. So if you're here, you're in the perfect place, perfect timing. This is part of your journey that you're going through right now in your life. And, um, you know, just be grateful for the fact that you're starting now, young, um, you know, obviously there's people that are younger than you and I that are starting. You might be jealous of those people. Good for them. You know, they're, they're, you know, if you are super young in your teens or your 20s, many people wish they're in that position and learning what you're learning now um, at your age. So 
Either way, you know, you can become successful, but just start right now today, the sooner the better. The second sign that you're destined to become a millionaire is that you have goals and a vision in your life that you focus on consistently. So millionaires are goal oriented because becoming a millionaire is nothing more than a goal. First starts as vision that you have. And when I mean about vision, you have to be able to see up here first in your mind what you want your reality to be because your mind, your imagination is more powerful than knowledge is what Einstein said because knowledge is what is, imagination is what could be. And when you have and use your imagination to create a vision for what you want for yourself in your life, everything that you've created in the outside world first starts up here. So you've got to create it up here first. You've got to see yourself living the life you've always wanted to live. You've got to be able to play in your mind like a movie the, uh, the dream life, your ideal life that you'd be living 10 years from now, 20 or 30 years from now. And so having a vision is key. Um, I know for myself, you know, I remember I used to create vision boards and I'd, you know, write out my perfect ideal day and where I'd be living and the car that I drive and the relationship that I'd have and, you know, the passive income and the freedom and traveling the world and making this contribution and giving to this charity and all these possibilities. But creating that vision was key because that's what fueled me to turn that into a reality. That's what gave me confidence that this was going to happen in my life because I saw it and I played it here in my mind a thousand times. So the more that you can see it up here, the more likely that's to manifest and become a part of your reality. But having the vision is one step and that's the big picture of where you wanna be. The other aspect is having those goals, being goal-oriented, setting achievable goals um, that you actually follow through on, right? So every single year, setting out your goals for your year financially. How much money do you want to save? How much money do you want to invest? Do you want to start a business? What kind of income or revenue do you want to generate in your business this year? You know, do you want a promotion in your job? Whatever it is, you have to set goals for that and to be actively pursuing them. And if you're just setting a goal, you know, becoming a millionaire is a big goal, but there's just a series of goals, milestones that you hit that lead you to becoming ultimately a millionaire. So, you know, maybe you're starting off you know, month to month, wherever you're starting from, you're just trying to grow your income by 10%, you know, and then once you achieve that, then you're just growing it by another 10%. And then once you achieve that, you're trying to grow your income another 10%. You're just slowly, you know, you know, setting a goal, achieving it, you know, making more money, setting the next goal, achieving it. And you're just continuing that process till eventually you build, a, you know, a million dollar net worth. So that's a key aspect of it is always having goals and following through on that. Uh, I know for me with my business, one, one number that was always a big number for me when I was in my 20s was to make $5,000 in a month. That was a huge goal for me, $60,000 in a year, because at the time I was making around $2,000 to $1,500 a month for several years. And I was just kind of always stuck in that income zone. And I was frustrated by that. And it took me a few years and trying many different things, starting different businesses before I was able to grow that to $5,000 a month. But once I achieved $5,000 a month, my next goal was how can I make $7,000 a month? You know, it wasn't to become a millionaire. It was just slowly making a little bit more and more money year after year after year till eventually I'm making $10,000 a month, $20,000 a month, $40,000 a month, $80,000 a month, $100,000 a month, $150,000 a month. I mean, it's amazing what it can grow to, but it always started small. Even when I was first starting an online business, the first goal, make $1. One thing I learned from one of my mentors, John Reese, he said that if you can make $1 online, then you're 95% of the way there to making $100,000 online because you found something that works. All you gotta do is just up the ante. You gotta rinse and repeat it. You gotta make it better. You gotta optimize it. You gotta scale it. And so I really believe that. So goals and vision is paramount. The third sign that you're destined to become a millionaire is that you're investing in yourself and your future. So when I say investing in yourself, I'm talking about your education, your skills, your training, your abilities, your capabilities. That might be reading books. You know, you're investing your money to buy a book to learn from someone that has what you want and you're adopting their belief and their mindset and their strategy and you're basically integrating that and in, in, downloading that into your brain, right? And you're reading book after book after book 
because they're hungry to learn. It might be going through online courses and training programs or seminars or hiring coaches and mentors. All of those things will pay dividends in your future and will pay off. Because the more that you learn, the more that you earn, right? So the more that you cultivate more information and knowledge, the better, but also investing in your skills and your capabilities. Uh, that could be your public speaking skills, your sales skills, your marketing skills, your writing skills, uh, you know, whatever skills you've determined are necessary in allowing you to become a millionaire. You have to be making investments in that, which means that you have to be applying the information that you're learning on a consistent basis. So the more that you're making those investments in yourself, as Warren Buffett says, the best investment you can make is in yourself, and that will pay off dividends in your future. Now, not just investing in yourself, but your future in the sense of investing your money. And by the way, the very nature of investing uh, presupposes a level of sacrifice is being made. Because if you have a certain amount of money or a certain amount of time, which you can invest, you're making a sacrifice because you could take, let's say you have $1,000, you could take that, you could spend it on things that give you immediate pleasure, gratification. You can go traveling, you can go with your friends, you could buy new clothes, you could buy a new iPhone, you could spend that money on things that will make you feel good in the short term. But the problem with that is that there's a long-term cost. There's an opportunity cost to that. And so when you're willing to invest, you're saying that I'm willing to delay the immediate gratification that I could get. I'm willing to take this money and I'm gonna put this into something that is not gonna give me gratification in the short term, but in the long term it will. You're delaying that gratification. So that's a huge sign that you're gonna become a millionaire or a multimillionaire is the fact that you're willing to make that sacrifice. And so when it comes to investing, of course, also investing your money. You're willing to take a percentage of what you've earned to put that aside, to not spend it on all these other things that you could, put that aside for your future, to save it and to invest it so that that can grow and compound into something greater. That is a key sign that you're gonna become a millionaire. So that could be stocks, real estate, cryptocurrency, you name it. The fourth sign that you're destined to become a millionaire is that you're good at managing your money. Successful people are good money managers. It's not how much money you make, it's how much money you keep. There's plenty of people out there that are making a lot of money, but they're spending it all. They're spending it on their lifestyle and they're not being smart and responsible with that money to grow it. So when I talk about um, being good at managing money, it means that you're keeping an eye on your finances on a regular basis. You're keeping an eye on your expenditures to make sure that they're not going out of control. You're living below your means. You're spending less than what you earn. You're keeping a budget and keeping, you know, it's very tempting even when you make more money to spend that money and be frivolous with it. But you have to have a discipline that says, I'm gonna, if I'm gonna make more money, I'm gonna slowly upgrade my lifestyle, but I wanna make sure that I'm primarily saving and investing this money for my future. So uh, cutting expenses if necessary. Uh, it might mean you know, uh, making sacrifices and you know, downgrading your lifestyle or you know, living more modest, you know, more modest, more humble means uh, so that you can get further ahead. Sometimes you get to take two steps back so that you can take 10 steps forward. Um, also avoiding bad debt, you know, credit card debt and you know, digging yourself a hole. Sometimes people do that and you're just setting yourself back so much that it's hard to get yourself out of that. So you have to be disciplined with your finances and how you manage your money to avoid bad debt. The fifth sign that you're destined to become a millionaire is that you're motivated and you're taking massive action. One thing I always learn is that change is not a matter of ability. It's always a matter of motivation. What do I mean by that? We all have the ability to do great things. We all have the ability to become a millionaire, multimillionaire. Heck, I even, we all have the ability to become a billionaire if we really wanted to. It does not come down to ability. What it comes down to is motivation. Do you want it bad enough? Are you willing to sacrifice? Are you willing to you know, work from morning till night, even burning the midnight oil if necessary, to be able to achieve whatever goal, whatever result that you desire. So to become a millionaire or a multimillionaire, you have to be motivated, you have to be hungry, you have to desire it, it has to be something that's important to you. You have to value it, it has to be more important in many cases than 
going out with your friends or spending time with family or watching Netflix or playing video games or whatever it is. You have to be willing to make this a greater priority and more important than other things in your life. You know, one of my teachers, Jim Rohn, he used to say that the TV is the electronic income reducing machine. <laughs> he believed and he taught that the more time that you spend on your TV watching things, minute by minute you're losing money. You're losing money on the opportunity cost of that time and what you could be doing with it to make more money. And so I remember I learned that at a young age and I got rid of my TV. I didn't have a TV for years and I got rid of video games. I got rid of, you know, I didn't listen to the radio or music anymore because I looked at, you know, one teacher, Brian Tracy, said that the radio is chewing gum for the ears. And so instead you wanna turn your car into a university on wheels. And so uh, I was learning that when I'm driving in my car, I've got to be listening to an audio program or listen to a podcast today or whatever it is so that I can always be feeding myself with information uh, that can help contribute to me achieving my goals. And so, you know, motivation is something that it has to, you have to have that. You have to desire it. You have to be willing to do what other people are not willing to do. Successful people will always do what failures are not willing to do. And you always get rewarded for the thousands of hours that you practice in private. You get rewarded in public for that. So uh, always, you always gotta you know, find ways to keep yourself motivated and driven along the journey of success. And of course I say take massive action as well because it's not enough just to be motivated. It's not enough just to read and listen to things. And you gotta be willing to take action. You have to be willing to take chances, to take risks, to be uncomfortable, to act in spite of fear, to act in spite of inconvenience, to act in spite of being tired, to act in spite of not feeling like it. You have to be willing to be that kind of person that is an overachiever, that is gonna be uber productive and efficient, optimizing their life so that they can achieve the goal, there's the result that they desire. And it's not to say that you have to live that way for the rest of your life, you know, but along the journey to get to where you want to go, you have to be willing to make some changes in how you're showing up to achieve what you want. If you keep doing what you've always done, you'll keep getting what you've always gotten. So a change has to be made to achieve what you want. What got you to where you are now is not going to get you to where you want to go, right? So you've always got to be willing to upgrade yourself and to change your ways. Number six is that you're open-minded and you're self-aware. You're willing to change and to make changes. So what do I mean by this? You have to be coachable. You have to be open to learning something new. You can't be stuck in your ego and say, I know that. Well, if you know that, then you'd already have what it is that you desire. So you don't really know. You're not living, you're not living it yet. So you always have to humble yourself and say, okay, I'm, I'm a student. I'm gonna learn from everybody. You know, if what I'm doing is not working, I have to be willing to humble myself and to look at what I'm doing from an objective viewpoint to see, okay, you know, where are my weaknesses? You know, where am I coming up short? Why did I not achieve this? What do I need to change within myself? You know, where am I not showing up in the ways that I need to? You know, do I have some limiting beliefs that I need to change, right? And that's where the self-awareness comes in. Do you have to be able to look at yourself and say, okay, this is something I need to improve in my life. Okay, this is, I got this pattern of scarcity and limited thinking that I need to work on. I've got this negative pessimistic attitude that I need to be able to shift and I need to you know, find resources and people I can learn from so I can shift that within myself. Okay, you know, I've got poor work ethic, so that's something I need to work on and improve. I have a lot of fear that's preventing me from taking action and taking risks and chances. Okay, that's something that I need to work on and improve. So you're always being willing to look at yourself in how you can improve and get better. That's, that's crucial. And you're willing to humble yourself to maybe find an expert, a coach, a mentor, someone that has what you want, and to put aside what you know, to listen to what they have to say, to listen to their feedback. Okay, so the feedback and taking on feedback is very important. It's an important aspect of you making the necessary changes to get to where you wanna go. I see so many people that um, are pursuing goals and success, but they're never willing to look at themselves. And you know, I often can watch and observe from a distance from a non-judgmental place, and I can see why they're not successful. You know, they have maybe a habit of starting things 
and not finishing them. But they don't have awareness of that and they're not doing anything to change that or improve it. You know, or they have this habit of saying they're gonna do something but then not following through. They're not keeping their word, they're not keeping their commitment. And they're naive to that, they're ignorant to it. And yet, you know, you can observe that and see, okay, that person's probably not gonna become successful until they address that, right? So you have to have that ability to be introspective, to look at yourself, to make the necessary changes and adjustments that can allow you to achieve what you want. And that goes not just for success, success in your relationship, your marriage, your health, whatever it is. You always have to have that self-awareness to see what's getting in the way and how can you solve it and move past that. You have to look at your blind spots. And sometimes you gotta have a coach that can see things that you can't see and point them out to you. Because we all have blind spots. Or you have to get altitude. It's like you gotta get outside yourself and look at yourself objectively from a third person's viewpoint and be able to you know, see what needs to change or what needs to improve. The seventh and the last sign, and by all means, you know, the last, there's many more I'm sure, but the one that I've identified that is key to becoming a millionaire is someone who is willing to make mistakes and they're willing to fail. Because every successful person that I know throughout history has failed. They've made mistakes, they're not perfect. They've set a goal and they've not achieved it. They've had an expectation and it didn't work out the way they wanted it to. They had this idea and people laughed at them and maybe they came up short. Time and time again, that has occurred when you study people that are successful. But the difference what I've learned from people that are successful and those that aren't, is they both fail, they both make mistakes, but the person that's successful they still keep taking action in spite of their failures or in spite of their, their mistakes that they make, but also because they don't view it as a failure. They don't view their failed attempt as something that was a negative experience. In fact, they oftentimes look at that as a learning, as, um, as, as something that they can grow and improve from. They look at it as feedback, and so they're not deterred by it. You know, in fact, one of the things I've once heard is that if you wanna become successful, then double your rate of failure. And if you're gonna fail, then fail forward. Because if you're failing forward, then you're learning from whatever the event occurred, and you're learning from that, and you, are, you can use that to your advantage to progress further. Now, if you look at a Thomas Edison who failed a thousand times, he said, I did not fail a thousand times. I just found a thousand ways where it didn't work. And every single one of those attempts those failures provided valuable insights and lessons that ultimately allowed me to invent the light bulb, right? So um, changing your relationship with failure, being okay with failure, you know, being okay with making mistakes, which I know is very hard for many people because they've been conditioned at a young age that failure means that you're not enough, right? Maybe in school you got a bad grade and your parents uh, criticized you for that or you know didn't show support and maybe made you feel bad and so you felt you're like you're not enough or you know you get a bad grade and you feel embarrassed by that and you feel like you're not enough there's plenty of people out there though that barely graduated high school even dropped out of high school or university that became multimillionaires and even billionaires and so you can't allow what's gone on in the past to dictate your future Right? The past does not equal the future. Right now is a new moment, a new opportunity. You have to be willing to step into the future, the uncertainty of that, to try new things that might not work out, but you have to be okay with it not working out because you're looking at the big picture for yourself and your life and that you're gonna learn every step of the way and that is going to ultimately contribute to the life you wanna live. So the only failure is not trying. If you're not trying, if you're staying where you are, that is the biggest failure of all. If you're trying and going for it, that's a sign that you are gonna become a millionaire. And it might not happen overnight, it might take many attempts, but you will get there as long as you never view those failures as failures and you remain optimistic throughout the way. So those are the seven signs that I've identified and observed that uh, are signs that you'll become a millionaire or a multimillionaire in your lifetime. And I want you to ask yourself which of these habits, character traits, qualities, and ways of being do you need to further cultivate in yourself? And what are you gonna do to grow and improve so that you can turn becoming a millionaire, a multimillionaire as a part of your reality? I'd love to hear what that is. Leave a comment below if you'd like. 
If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe here at Project Life Mastery for more. And I look forward to seeing you again in the next video. God bless. Take care.